So we're going to practice today mixing our double primary palette and we're going to start with the two reds, two blues, and two yellows. So here we have the naphthol red equivalent, the naphthol crimson equivalent, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, yellow ochre, and Indian yellow. You're going to need about a dime to a quarter size amount of paint squeezed out. So squeeze out about that much of each color. Make sure you have your handout with you while you're working so that it's easy to follow what we're doing because it's a little complicated at first. So make sure you have that handout for this lesson uh, downloaded and either up on your iPad or your computer or print it out so that you can compare colors. So we're going to start by adding a little bit of white to the dye colors. Remember that Indian yellow, the naphthol crimson, and the two blues are all three dye colors, which means they're transparent. And so they're going to need a little bit of white, not much, not that much, added to them to make them opaque instead of transparent. So you'll see that the Indian yellow that looked super muddy when it came out of the tube, almost the same degree of mud as the yellow ochre, lightens and brightens significantly as you add the white. You want to add that white slowly to make sure that you're not pushing it too far. If you put too much white in, it will begin to dilute the saturation and dull the color out. So that's why I'm going kind of slow on that. Use the number 81 palette knife to painting knife to mix with. It's a great mixing tool. And notice how I'm kind of plowing the field and then folding it back over. It's the easiest way to make sure that all of your paint is mixed in together. Also be sure to wipe carefully in between so that you don't pollute one color with the color next to it. So the way to mix is that sort of plow and turn. Plow and turn. That lets you keep the paint in neat piles and also thoroughly mix your colors. So there's the yellow, and I need a little bit of white, not as much as with the yellow, into that naphthol crimson. So we're going to try to bring it up to almost the same value as the naphthol red. You can see what a huge difference there is between the crimson and the regular red. little bit more white. There we go. Get a little close there to the red. And getting good with keeping your paint in little even neat piles really is just a matter of practice. So then I'm going to do the same thing with the ultramarine blue and the phthalo blue. I'm hoping I didn't mix those two blues up. We'll see real fast. Nope, I didn't. They look really similar until you add a little bit of white to them. Then you can see how much warmer the ultramarine is than the phthalo. So there's our ultramarine blue. It's a great blue, not nearly as strong 
as the Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue is a synthetic dye color. So a little bit of it goes a long, long way. You won't need to buy another tube of that for quite some time. So it doesn't take much blue of the Thalo Blue to go anywhere. So it's going to take a little bit more white in the Thalo Blue than it did in the Ultramarine. There we go. And this is the second time I've done it on this palette today, so you can see the spots where the colors are going to go and approximately what we're trying to mix to. So there's the Thalo Blue. You see how just adding a little bit of white to it really brings out the color, brings out the intensity. Again, make sure you are really wiping that knife off in between. I don't know if you can see how messy that paper towel is. Thalo is super, super intense and gets everywhere. So wipe it a lot once you get that Thalo off. Indian Yellow is the other one that goes everywhere. I always end up wearing it. So then we're going to mix the Indian Yellow and the Red to make orange. So we're going to go for a color that's halfway between yellow and the Fanchon Red, Naphthol Red. So we're going to start with a little bit of yellow. And take a fairly small amount of red. A little red goes a long, long way. Always start with the light color and mix the darker color into it in small amounts at a time so you don't have to back up. If you start with a dark color, you could end up with an enormous pile by the time you're finished. Just from the volume, the sheer volume of the lighter color you're going to have to put into it to get the right color. So always mix from the light with the dark into it. So there's our orange. So I'm going to take some of that, put it right here, take a little of the Indian Yellow, and mix those two together. And I should have done the yellow first and then put the orange into it if I was following my own rules. So make sure you do what I say do, not what I just did. So start with the yellow and then mix the orange into it and it'll take less yellow in the long term. So I'm having to mix a whole pile more yellow back into it to make the yellow orange that I was trying to go for. There we go. Yellow orange. It's about halfway between yellow and orange. For the red orange, again, we're going to mix the lighter, darker into the light. So, I'm going to take some that I've already pre-mixed over there, put it right here. Same color. And again, very little bit of that red. It doesn't take much at all. Very strong tinting strength. And it's far better to add a little bit of that red at a time. I'm trying to go halfway between the orange in the red. There we go. Maybe a tiny little bit more red. And I didn't mean tiny because it doesn't take much, like I said, at all. It's going to drastically impact the hues. So go slow on adding those darker colors. Saw how much of that yellow I had to put back in when I made the mistake of going from dark to light. Doesn't work super well. So that gives us our yellows to the reds. Now we're going to go between yellow and blue. To mix our color wheel, we're mainly going to use the Indian yellow. We're not going to use the yellow ochre for the color wheel itself because it's not a pure color. 
it's a little bit dulled out but we're going to use it to make some adjacent greens so that's why it's sitting a little further in towards the interior so we're going to take some of that yellow remember we're going to mix dark into light so there's our light and I'm going to get a tiny little bit of that phthalo. I'm going to go slow on the phthalo because, again, it is a super intense color. Darkens everything really, really, really fast. And I don't want to suddenly end up with blue-green right there. Okay, it's still fairly light. So I'm going to add a little bit more about that same amount of phthalo blue in. And I'm going to keep adding little tiny amounts, and I mean minuscule amounts, when I'm mixing this little tiny bit of green. Because if I go too far, which is really easy to do with phthalo, it's going to get way too dark. That little tiny bit that I just put on brought it right back down to just about pure green. So there we have pure green. It's going to be the lighter color for the blue green, so I'll put some of that over there. Need a new paper towel. And pull some of the that green over. And We'll go into it with phthalo blue. So we're going for a blue-green. It's going to be halfway between the green and the phthalo. So it's still a little bit too green. So we're going to inch closer to the blue-green. See how we're starting to get blue-green? But it's still closer to the green than it is to the blue in hue. So I'm going to keep adding a little bit more that low. I think that may be it. Almost. Not quite. At first, you may not be able to tell the difference, which is why I wanted you to have the cheat sheet in hand while you're doing this, because you're going to need to compare. So you're going to need to hold the knife up like that to the cheat sheet to literally match the colors. So keep adding the phthalo blue for this one until it matches the color on the cheat sheet. And there we've got it go even a little bit more blue. And there we have a nice blue-green color that's about halfway between. So again, because there's phthalo on there, I am cleaning my knife off like a mad woman. So next we're going to go into making a yellow-green. To do that, again, we're going to mix the dark into the light. Get a little bit more of that yellow. And it's not going to take much of the green at all. So again, I don't want to go too dark too fast. Better to take a minute and mix something that's a little bit more precise. So phthalo blue and Indian yellow make this whole range of greens. And there we have a green that's about halfway in between green and yellow. It's yellow green. So now we're going to move into our last combination. We're going to first mix our violet which is our secondary color and it's going to come from the ultramarine blue 
right here and the alizarin, I mean, the alizarin crimson or naphthol crimson. So remember again, we're going to mix dark into light. And it's going to probably take a little bit more ultramarine blue than it did the phthalo blue to make another mixture because it's not as strong a tinting strength. It quickly goes to that deep, dark violet. Violet and blue violet are the inherently darkest colors on our palette. And you can see that they're the darkest ones on the color wheel. It's a little bit more blue. There we go. So again, hold that color chart up to match and make sure you're getting close to the same one. Now, to make the blue violet remember light into dark into light so I want to get a little bit more of the ultramarine blue it is actually lighter than the violet and some of that violet and we're gonna make a blue violet there we go you can see why I said blue violets one of the darkest ones makes a great super dark indigo color yummy blue violet. So for our last one we're going to mix a red violet which is going to come from the naphthol red with a little bit of the violet. And I'm going to go as slow as I can on that violet so that I don't end up becoming a little too blue. And there we have a nice red violet. There you go. So from here, you need to get a panel or a piece of canvas, gesso canvas on foam core or oil paper or something of that sort and lay the small dabs of color out to make a color wheel on that support, just like we did here. If you want to add the additional greens, just to show you a little bit about what those look like when they are mixed with the blues. Here is halo blue and yellow ochre. Not quite enough. It makes a really nice rich green. To make it more blue green or more green green. Get a little bit more yellow ochre out. And you'll see why I like having it on the palette. It makes real earthy greens, something close to the Terra Verde. So if you were trying to avoid having to buy all those convenience colors, you can make a Terra Verde with yellow ochre and thalo blue. And then for the ultramarine blue, You're going to get a much more kind of dull green because the ultramarine blue is going to make duller greens. But it, again, is a really useful color for landscape painters. You can make it more yellow or more greenish depending on what you mix it with. So there it goes. So the last thing I want you to do is to take a panel and to place those colors in the exact same position on the panel that you had on the palette. And as you can see, I've mixed a couple of additional greens here using the yellow ochre. That's one of the main reasons I have yellow ochre on the palette is that you can get some fabulous greens by mixing yellow ochre with either thalo blue or ultramarine blue. You can find those on your handout. 
and I will add those to the bottom of the page. Happy painting!